How's it going star seekers? My name's Luke and welcome back once again to the channel where today we're going to be taking a look at a rather interesting game called Aground. Now the game first released on Steam a few years back but it's just been ported to the Nintendo Switch and if you're a fan of games like Minecraft and Terraria then this game might just be right up your alley. Aground is a crafting and mining RPG platformer where you have to build up your small town, gather resources and learn new technologies in the hopes of eventually leaving the planet that you now find yourself stranded on. Going solely off the eShop images, you might be thinking that Aground is just a poor man's Terraria. But trust me, you'd definitely be wrong for thinking so, as Aground has got plenty of unique gameplay elements which make it stand out from other games in the genre and way more depth to it than first seems. So without further ado, let's get into this review and see what Aground has to offer. So I'll start by saying that I'm not going to be covering too much depth in this review. Firstly, because as I said, there's way more to the game than first meets the eye. And secondly, because a lot of the enjoyment with Aground is actually discovering all of its hidden secrets. It's worth noting that Aground is only a single player experience, so just don't go into it expecting multiplayer. Now upon starting a new game, we first get to create our character. There's a decent amount of customization here with various hairstyles, beard styles, clothing and skin colors, and for my character I settled on this fine specimen. When it comes to the game's difficulty options, this can actually be adjusted at any time from the in-game options menu, and there are a bunch of other settings to customize gameplay and the user interface. So as the game begins, we get a nice little introductory cutscene, which depicts our survivor waking up in the water, swimming to the surface which is racked by a ferocious storm, and finding his way to dry land. After crawling his way onto the shores of an unfamiliar island, our first task in the game is to gather some wood and finish constructing a shelter before heading inside. Moments later, we get a knock at the door, which turns out to be this potato head who was apparently too tired to finish the shelter, and this guy is a proper miserable bastard. Anyway, we wake up next day and get to work developing our new settlement. It turns out that old Misery Goats is actually a builder, and he hands us an axe so we can gather more wood to create our first building, a storehouse. As with games like Minecraft and Terraria, in order to actually gather resources you require a couple of tools, such as axes to chop down trees, and a pickaxe to mine things like coal, iron and other types of materials, but unlike these games, the location and size of land masses themselves are not randomly generated, and it's only the materials within them that are. Axes and the likes can be used as weapons in the early game, but as your settlement develops you're able to forge a bunch of different weapons and armour, all of which can be equipped in your character's equipment screen. Although the equipable items in a ground aren't quite as exotic as those found in Terraria, there's still some great variety to them and there's always an element of excitement when you discover something new to craft. So the first building we get to construct is a storehouse where we can dump all the materials and items we don't want to carry on our person. There is a limit to how much we can carry though this can be expanded and if you surpass this limit your movement speed is slowed and you begin to lose stamina, seen as a green bar below your red health bar. Stamina is quite important as it's used to perform any type of action in the game and if this runs out you'll actually start to lose health and eventually die. Now both stamina and health can be restored by consuming various types of food and the gameplay settings allow you to automatically consume food when these run low. You can also increase your maximum health and stamina through level ups gained by earning XP from crafting, foraging and combat and there are quite a few different stats you can dump skill points into to improve your different skills and attributes. Now when it comes to the game's combat system, as with other gameplay elements, for the most part things are kept quite simple in the ground and you'll either be using melee weapons for up close combat or ranged weapons for attacking at a distance. The first couple of islands are home to only a few hostile creatures, but as you explore the wider world, combat becomes a more frequent occurrence and you're gonna need some decent gear to deal with the enemies that you face. There's some good variety to the game's enemies which include humanoids, animals and a bunch of other exotic species and in addition to your standard enemies, you've also got plenty of boss-like enemies who drop rare components when defeated. 
One thing that I will advise against is attacking a dragon after playing the game for about an hour, as this will just result in you being incinerated and having to load up your game from your last save point. Now as the game goes on, you'll encounter a number of different NPCs who will join your little settlement, offer their skills to you and provide you with quests which on completion unlock new buildings and technologies for you to construct. One great thing about the game is that these NPCs don't just stand idle in your town and while you're away they'll gather resources and tend to your crops, so you'll always be gaining additional materials even when you're off exploring. Now unlike Terraria or Minecraft where you have to construct buildings piece by piece or add individual materials to forge items, a ground once again keeps things simple by providing blueprints for buildings which you then place directly into an open area before adding all the required materials to construct them. All the items that you can actually craft are then automatically displayed when you interact with the relevant buildings. You have things like a kitchen for cooking an assortment of tasty dishes, a smelter for transforming raw ores into bars and a workshop where you can then use these bars to craft weapons, armour and tools. As you progress further into the game, you also unlock several other buildings including a farm where you can grow crops and raise cattle to provide a constant supply of cooking ingredients, a market where you can buy and sell different materials and eventually you're able to construct a dock, allowing you to build a boat and set off in search of other islands and survivors. The planet which you find yourself on is actually only the first of several planets that you can visit in game. You do have quite a journey ahead of you before you're able to seek the stars, but this planet alone has a huge amount of content for you to discover. You're going to have to search high and low to uncover all of its secrets, and there's plenty of puzzle solving required to obtain the game's rarest equipment. So your first encounter with other survivors sees you arriving in a town called Sunset Haven where the technology is way more advanced in comparison to your own settlement. In order to get your hands on some of this new tech though, you're going to have to help them get the power back online and assist them with a the little bandit problem that they're having. Unlocking more advanced technology allows you to upgrade and replace your current buildings and these also enable you to craft more advanced equipment, allowing you to dig a little deeper and explore new lands to obtain rare and exotic materials. Now when it comes to a storyline, there's actually a decent amount of dialogue and lore in the game, which came as a bit of a surprise considering Terraria and Minecraft mainly focus on the gathering and crafting mechanics. Many of the survivors you meet will converse with you, and resting in your hometown often initiates a short cutscene where they'll reveal a bit of the backstories or discuss events which have occurred after crash landing on the planet. As with hidden locations, there are plenty of NPCs hidden out the way, and while some characters do provide hints on where you can actually find them, you'll often need specific equipment in order to actually reach them. So in all, a ground really surprised me with the depth of its gameplay and the amount of content that it actually had to offer. Last night I found myself playing for hours after I'd captured enough content for this review and after checking out the game's wiki, it appears as though I've only just scratched the surface with what I've discovered so far. When it comes to visuals, sure the game isn't quite as polished as Minecraft or Terraria, but I really started to appreciate the effort that had gone into making all of the game's assets and I'd say the audio is actually on par with the other games. I thought the cutscenes were actually a great addition as they breathed life into the game's characters and I especially appreciated this Hunter fella's fantastic tash. When it comes to issues with the game, I'd say the control scheme can be a bit finicky at times and the terrain you can build on is a little restrictive at first but I think the main thing that some people might have issue with is that you're limited to prefabricated building designs and you're unable to manually construct your own elaborate bases. Other than those things though, there's very little I can fault about it. Overall, I'd say Ground offers just as much content as other games of this genre. It has some unique gameplay mechanics setting it aside from them and I highly recommend giving the game a go if you're into these type of games and have got plenty of hours to sink into it. When it comes to a rating, I'm going to be giving a ground 5 out of 5 stars. Now I will admit that I was a little reluctant to play the game upon first seeing it, expecting it just to be another Minecraft clone, but I'm actually really glad that I did as I enjoyed my time playing and I'll definitely be jumping back into it to discover what else it's got to offer. You can get a ground from the UK Switch eShop for £10.99 
or from the US eShop for $14.99. Alternatively, the game's also available on PlayStation, Xbox and Steam. And that about wraps up this review of a ground. Make sure to drop a like if you enjoyed it, comment down below with your thoughts and opinions on the game, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel as I upload new Switch game reviews every few days. For now though, I just want to thank you all once again for watching, and until next time, take care of yourselves, and game on.